Okay, so recording has started and we have about 50 participants. So I think we're good to start. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. My name is Eric Oswara. I am the founder, CEO of Afforma. And um, we are very grateful to have you all um, attending this webinar. Um, today, that's, uh, today uh, is, is the first of our uh, many webinars that we will be hosting from the uh, team of Afforma. And um, one of our uh, hosts, uh, two of our hosts will be um, Patrick Bunonu, who is leading our AI and uh, business um, strategy within Afforma and our decentralized marketplace. And Baiju Jacobs is responsible or leading our blockchain strategy. And uh, he will be talking about the Afforma tokenomics as we um, go through this webinar. If there are questions people may, may have, please feel free to put your questions on the chat. We'll do our very best to get to it. If not, we will um, we'll take some time to review. And if there's a way we can communicate, maybe on our social media channels, we'll be doing that. Okay. So before we proceed, I just want to be sure we're all good to start. I think we are. So I will be starting off with um, the webinar. I will just you all be bringing in our vision, what our um, what our vision and mission within our form itself. Then I will be passing that all along to Baiju Jacob, who will then take over and talk discussing our blockchain strategy and our form tokenomics. And then Patrick will be uh, rounding up with uh, bringing us or uh, closing things down with the um, AI strategy and business strategy within uh, the centralized marketplace. Okay, so I will then start off. Um, so I run a not-for-profit organization here in Canada, and we do a lot of our work across Sub-Saharan Africa. And that was, uh, that was what led uh, my path down to Aforma itself. So Aforma was pretty much inspired by the work we've been doing with my not-for-profit, which is called Azoneta. Um, Azoneta is actually named after my two daughters, Chineta and Chiazo. Uh, we are registered in Canada, as I said, and we do a lot of work around Sub-Saharan Africa. So whenever you have some time, please visit our website at Azoneta to see some of the work that we've done. Uh, Azoneta is focused on uh, the alleviation of poverty, advancement of education, and the promotion of good health and well-being. Okay. So what is our vision at Afoma? So Afoma will drive the world's first decentralized uh, commerce ecosystem. We intend to bring in artists and artisans across the globe with emphasis on Africa and the developing world. Um, we will be leveraging emerging technologies, as, uh, as, as I mentioned, around blockchain and artificial intelligence. The reason why is most of the other e-commerce platforms that we have today are more profit-driven and which absolutely, there isn't, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. But in order for us to lift others up or to lift people out of their current situations, especially in developing nations, as most especially in Africa, we need to take on or put on the hat of, of coming in from a social enterprise perspective. So that is our passion and that is our vision. We want to bring in artisans and artists from across the globe. We are um, a, an inclusive organization or we will be an inclusive organization. Um, but we will build our platform to actually enable and enhance the capabilities of other developing or marginalized artists and artisans. Our community will be governed and supported through by NGOs. We intend to partner with NGOs. We will be part of, uh, partnering up with um, um, uh, uh, for-profit organizations who share our vision as well, um, because we definitely cannot do this alone. We definitely need the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, collaboration of um, experienced professionals in the industry to actually achieve our goal. So that is um, what we intend to do to build a com community. We are passionate about building a community. That's what Aforma stands for. And Aforma will be committing to um, supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which, which uh, we mentioned across some of our social media channels, a percentage of revenue that Aforma generates will be ded dedicated to um, 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 uh, supporting um, so, uh, SDG goals um, across some of these developing nations as well. We are excited as well in, in regards to 
our NFT factory or marketplace. We will be, it's part of our roadmap to actually build and uh, um, build out our NFT marketplace for minting and promoting artists, again, from developing countries. And we will be connecting them to the emerging metaverse. I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about the metaverse. It is uh, something that's really gaining ground. Uh, Facebook has already committed a significant amount of its um, developers to actually building out their own metaverse. Africa will not be left behind. Developing countries will not be left behind. And that is where we come in, okay? So what are the challenges in developing regions today? We have a lot of payment systems across Africa, especially um, that uh, has its own challenges. We've got mobile pay. We have every other platform that sits out there. But the challenge is all of these payment systems are fragmented, right? A lot of these payment systems are fragmented and they are expensive. I will give you a scenario. We are doing some work across Sub-Saharan Africa for my not-for-profit. And one of the one of the uh, part of our program, we are trying to incentivize some of the beneficiaries in, within our program. We are attempting to send money to these beneficiaries. It costs us um, the same amount of what we're supposed to send out to these beneficiaries. It is costing us the same amount to, to of what we're sending down to process that fee. So these are the challenges with um, uh, with um, with some of these. Uh, 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 payment systems, which are results, which are a result of intermediaries across these regions as well. So those are the challenges we have across um, um, Africa today. Um, we have a lack of fair access market, uh, fair, fair market access uh, for regions um, uh, to some of these um, e-commerce platforms that we have today. Um, we'll give an example. For for example, Etsy today is more focused. Uh, towards the North American and Euro, um, European um, regions, which are high income countries today. We definitely want to provide as much uh, fair market access for some of our regions um, within uh, Africa and other developing countries um, who are challenged by socioeconomic factors. Okay. And I see some gentleman are, is raising his hands. Let's, uh, I would want to try as, um, finish up this, uh, uh, my, my section before I pass it on to Baiju. Uh, is anyone here having any issues with audio? Because we're hearing some people say they can't hear the voice of the speaker. Is that correct? Audio is good. Okay. All right. Very good. So if you're having any technical difficulties, please try and maybe log out and log back in um, because we're getting comments that the audio is fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, one of the other challenges we've come across is the slow scaling of digital entrepreneurship across Africa. One of the things that we've noticed or I've noticed is that we have a lot of entrepreneurs who are, um, um, uh, you know, building their own businesses, but they can't scale out of uh, beyond Africa. That's one of the challenges that, that we see. And some of these problems are due to lack of, uh, you know, digital infrastructure penetration to support some of these rural communities, right? And again, there's a large dependence on centralized systems, primitive concepts, and uh, traditional technology. Bringing in what we, these, these, are, these, are, these create barriers, right? That is the problem, these create barriers. And we're trying to find ways to create um, an economy of scale where the individuals or these uh, entrepreneurs can scale out of their local economies and be part of the um, global, uh, global economy. Another issue we identify is a lack of uh, uh, personal identification, which again results to um, a number of um, unbanked individuals. They can't get access to loans within the bank, and then they can't establish trust within their uh, businesses, especially in commerce as well, okay? So where do we provide an advantage? Um, we, we, we intend to come in and eliminate barriers. We intend to come in to eliminate intermediaries. We want to empower the unbanked. Um, and at the end of the day, through our introduction of a crypto payment option within our decentralized platforms, that is what, what we hope to do to, to, to encourage people to adopt um, uh, crypto, cri cryptocurrency as a form of payment, which would then enable them break barriers across regions today. 
we will not have, we don't, we hope not to see the issues of barriers where a, a system that works in Nigeria, for example, my home country, does not work in Ghana, right? So we definitely want to find ways to break barriers. And that is what Aforma is all about. That is what we, the team is uh, driven to achieve. We will be leveraging emerging technologies as well to enable establishment of trust, leveraging um, smart contracts within the blockchain infrastructure and a former as well. That is what we hope to achieve as well, or that is our competitive advantage, our commitment to our, uh, to our investors, or to our token holders. We intend to drive a token-based um, incentive model to drive the adoption, uh, referral, engagement, customer feedback, and optimal curation within our decentralized platform. We will intend to expand business models uh, that will drive for inclusion, that will promote anti-poverty initiatives across the regions today that are experiencing socioeconomic challenges. All we expect from people or our artisans or artists who are part of our network is, is, is simply an internet-enabled device. That's all. All they need is an internet-enabled device and we will then be onboarding them within our platform. Okay, that is, that is what we are trying to achieve here, a seamless way for them to integrate. We intend to run a platform that will create inclusion um, and uh, uh, allow uh, individuals or, or businesses who can't afford to normally list within our competitors to be able to list with us. We intend to uh, uh, drive, uh, run a decentralized ecosystem that enables governance and voting to ensure fair market access and equity within humanitarian efforts. What do I mean by that? What we hope to achieve, as I pointed out in a few slides, is where a percentage of our revenue, we intend to give back to, to, to drive um, or to support humanitarian efforts. What we intend to achieve or how we intend to achieve governance or transparency or traceability is where our token holders have the capability to vote. When they vote, they determine where that humanitarian effort needs to be channeled. That is what we hope to achieve as well, or what we intend to achieve with our token donors. And we intend to re reward our token holders as well with transaction-based reflection tokens, okay? So what is our former? Our former, is, our former will be driving an ecosystem, um, uh, leveraging the token, which uh, uh, we, we flagged as uh, our, our symbol is o OMA. Um, the OMA token uh, is the fuel that will drive our social impact ecosystem. And that ecosystem is made up of governance, uh, uh, humanitarian side of things, our uh, marketplace, rewards, an NFT factory, and an Aforma wallet. Yes, um, Aforma, we, 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 do, we are looking at uh, building out a wallet, which will be part of our decentralized uh, um, um, e-commerce platform. These are all included within our roadmap, um, within uh, our strategy which is all available on our light paper. So you can pl please kindly visit our website and take a look at what our roadmap looks like. But we are intend to, in order for us to be successful, we are looking at building a social impact ecosystem, not just within our format. This can stretch with other organizations, other not-for-profits that intend to leverage our format to achieve goals. I'll give you an, a simple scenario. There, there are social enterprises or uh, organizations that we are speaking to today that want to leverage our format to drive their own social impact initiatives, where they want to use our format to incentivize their programs, to incentivize their employees, their, their, their staff members. They can push their staff or their employees to go into the communities to actually give back, and then they reward using our format token. So when I say that it is the core component and our key success factor, through which we can intend, which we intend to create and continuously support a sustainable a decentralized future. That is what we intend to, or that is our mission, or that is our vision. We stay true to that, and that is our commitment to our community. So at this time, I would like to pass on um, our, our next um, chapter of this webinar to Baiju Jacobs. I will be making Baiju a um, I'll be unmuting you, Baiju, so that you can uh, speak to um, our community. Can you, are you on mute, Baiju? Yeah, I just unmuted. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, and, uh, you know, explaining that uh, vision around the community. 
but before I go, I have to thank a lot of people here. Uh, I see close to 100 people attending this, and many of you are, uh, you know, late in the evening, late night uh, attending this. So, uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for taking your time. I know your time is very, very valuable. Um, uh, so I, I will keep my uh, portion short. Uh, obviously, our uh, vision is around building the community. Uh, but when you are, I, I, I believe that a lot of you are already engaged with crypto. And um, obviously, when, when you are talking about crypto and tokens, uh, the vision is all good, the utility is all good, but if the tokenomics doesn't work, then then we have a we have a challenge, right? So so we need to make sure that the right tokenomics is supplied uh, in our case too, uh, so that we have a enduring vision uh, down the line where our uh, token value is preserved and enhanced uh, through the process. So I, I will I will just uh, uh, take two. Uh, simple examples, uh, right? Uh, um, most of you have heard that the scarcity of the token is what makes it more valuable. Um, and at the same time, there is also the utility part of it, uh, where a lot of people need to hold the tokens and use the tokens for that token to get value, right? Um, I, since most of you have heard about Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, I would just take that example. Uh, when, 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 uh, if any of you have read, uh, read the white paper of Bitcoin, all right, um, what what the uh, Bitcoin was intended, if you, if you really read the white paper, what Satoshi wrote there was to make Bitcoin the global money for the internet, uh, which means that it was supposed to be a very high utility coin. But obviously, it was a concept which was born much before its time. Uh, so, uh, so using it as a, a large scale utility was was difficult. So, most of the community who which who believed in Bitcoin, uh, what what they did was to uh, hold the coins, which made it scarce and which eventually uh, resulted in Bitcoin rising in value, uh, right? Because uh, and a lot of people believed in it, and then uh, now it became scarce and it. it created value. Uh, but if you look at Ethereum, it, it went in a slightly different route. It, it, it was not focused on scarcity and holding. It was more around how we can uh, build a community and provide more and more utility to the community. Um, the first of which was uh, ERC-20 coin, if you know ERC-20 uh, uh, standard. Which, which helped people create their own tokens, right? So it became uh, suddenly Ethereum and Ether became so popular um, and, uh, and everybody wanted to use that coin, right? Uh, so it, this continues to this day, right? Even, even today, every day, a, a, a token, whether it is a DeFi token or an NFT token is being uh, created in Ethereum. Uh, the same thing uh, they did with the NFT standard ERC-720, where you could create a non-fungible token, which is becoming a rage now uh, across, uh, across the blockchain world. So Ethereum was more focused on the utility part of it. Their community was always behind that, that particular idea. In the recent times, you have heard about multiple coins which are coming up, which are employing uh, something called uh, extreme tokenomics, right? Extreme tokenomics, like, uh, I don't want to name the coins, but they start with like quadrillion uh, tokens, then uh, they launch it and uh, within a day, they burn 500 trillion tokens. Um, uh, they have a extreme high tax of 10% for transactions and 5% is rewarded for, for the holders. So the, so that was a very novel approach. And uh, you know, obviously the first couple of tokens which came out with that concept really, really got the market. Uh, but then uh, after that, around 200 to 300 tokens were created, just copying the same idea, which didn't get anywhere. Um, so 
uh, the fact is that extreme tokenomics is is good you know it it could it could help a certain coins but it's not a template as such all right um, and uh, when we are talking about building a community and utility token there are also challenges from a, a utility token perspective right uh, to uh, to make sure that the token velocity is optimal so that the value goes up so what we are trying to do here with Afoma is we, we want to take a balanced approach where tokenomics and the utility goes hand in hand. We will have shareholder rewards like some of the other tokens which are giving 5%, but ours will be uh, uh, like one person because uh, our, we feel that our token will be much more utilized. So even if you are getting 5% from a token which is hardly changing hands, uh, even with one person, if it is moving much faster, you might get the same amount at the end of the year, right? Uh, and, and we don't want to keep our um, um, transaction fee very high because that will prevent its utility. So, so we are taking a very balanced approach. Um, uh, and in, in uh, some of the various processes I will explain later on, uh, how we will do the buybacks and the burns of the tokens. We are not just arbitrarily burning tokens, but we will be burning tokens based on how the utilization is at a certain point. Um, uh, and we have multiple processes for encouraging holding of the tokens, and as well as uh, you know, staking um, rewards for, for some of our liquidity mining programs. Um, just, just, as an, um, uh, just to give an uh, introduction to the token, obviously Eric mentioned that our token symbol is OMA. Um, the initial circulating supply, that is when we launched the token, which we plan to do uh, Q1 of 2022, uh, would be under 24%. So uh, even within that 24%, some of the uh, early investors or the seed, for, seed uh, funding, uh, seed backers, uh, they would have a cliff period. So they won't be able to bring their tokens immediately into the market. So this is one way of making sure that, you know, there is no kind of a dump of the token, um, you know, once it is launched. Um, and our, our uh, projected uh, market cap at launch is around 4.7 million. Um, this could be... Uh, because our market cap is based on what we have done uh, that far, right? Uh, we will be showing you some of the things which we have already done, uh, which is which is our Celtic marketplace. Um, we intend to have a beta uh, or the uh, beta version of our Celtic marketplace, functional one, uh, available by end of this year. So even before our launch, some of our activities uh, will be, uh, you know, you will you will you will be able to. Um, See, see and feel it. Uh, similarly, we are working on our NFT. Our NFT team is working on the NFT side of things, uh, creating a wallet. All those things are happening at the same time. So we are not uh, launching a token, getting some money, and then trying to do things. We are in the process of, uh, you know, uh, of our project. Um, we are currently we are we have. Uh, we are getting uh, seed funding and uh, you know, backing from some of the early investors. Uh, but but that, uh, just wanted to confirm that this is some this is an ongoing project where a lot of people are involved, a uh, lot of passionate people are involved uh, who wants to help help this community. Um, so this uh, now uh, this is a, a snapshot of the initial distribution of the tokens uh, into various buckets. Uh, you know. Um, the early contributors, the private sale, public sale, uh, liquidity, mining rewards, uh, partnerships with uh, different exchanges uh, for listing. Uh, there, is, there is a reserve component, uh, which is around 15%. But this, this reserve is not to be used uh, for the first, it is locked for the first two years. And any, any release of the tokens from this reserve components needs to be approved by the community, which means that if you are a token holder, you will have that uh, power to vote for release of the token. And uh, we will come out with the framework on how it can be released so that it doesn't affect the value of the token. Uh, same is the case with the Foundation. 
Afoma Foundation tokens are mainly meant to uh, increase the holding of Afoma tokens. So one of the things is uh, we are doing is uh, the rewards program, uh, which we will be ro rolling out through Celitic. The good part of it is that the Celitic is an artisanal uh, and artist marketplace. So which means that we are rewarding people who are actually part of that community. Uh, we will be rewarding the artisans too for joining the platform as well as people who are buying the platform, which means that we, we are building a community passionate around our goal. Uh, so that's how the token, uh, and we are looking at different other avenues also to reach out to this community so that this, this uh, community can have more and more of a former tokens. Um, in short, uh, uh, based on our uh, distribution, uh, we, we intend to keep our community holding always at the highest level, um, at least you know, within uh, even immediately after launch, it would be uh, more than 50% of, of the tokens would be owned by the community, which would substantially increase over, over the period of uh, you know, three to four years, uh, going to 60%. And at some point of time down the line, we want the community to hold the maximum number of tokens and community to govern it. So that is the real vision behind uh, decentralized autonomous ecosystems, uh, which the tokens are supposed to enable, right? Uh, this is a quick uh, look at how the tokens are released. Uh, what you see is, uh, you know, uh, six month schedule, uh, right? Uh, uh, the initial release, as I said, would be less than 24%, which over a period of, four years, uh, you know, yeah, the, the whole token would be released uh, in, in phases. Uh, and that, that plan, that detailed plan, we will be publishing it in uh, our in a Medium article, uh, which we can share. I also uh, encourage you to follow our social channels. Um, we have a Telegram, so I, I know some of the countries, uh, Twitter is a challenge to access. Uh, but uh, Telegram is there. Telegram, our, our handle is Afoma Official. Um, and we have a Facebook uh, uh, channel as well. Uh, so, so you could, you could uh, follow any of them. We keep posting our updates there. Um, now, uh, one thing which I mentioned before is that to make sure that the token uh, you know, increases in value, uh, we need to manage the token velocity. Uh, properly. Uh, so we are not planning to use OMA, the AFOMA token, as a medium of exchange. It's not, not that you uh, buy AFOMA tokens, use it to purchase something, and uh, you know the merchant gets it, he, he or she cashes out. Because in that case, there is uh, no holding of tokens. Obviously, you could do that. Uh, with the former token, because it is it is a easily exchangeable, redeemable uh, commodity, but that is not our main aim. So what we are doing is that we are going to use this token to incentivize various processes within this marketplaces and different programs which Aforma is supporting. Uh, for example, for uh, loyalty, uh, loyalty rewards for purchasing, uh, rewards for referring your friends uh, to to the platforms. Um, uh, rewards for even visiting the uh, marketplace regularly, right? The engagement part uh, to stimulate that engagement by the customers to the to our marketplaces, and uh, and also rewards uh, for curating. For example, you have a new product and a new merchant, and you want to bring it, bring them in. And uh, if you if you if you recommend a product, recommend a vendor, there also there will be rewards. Uh, there will be liquidity mining rewards, uh, which where you could stake your OMA tokens and earn rewards. We have uh, created a you know special allocation for that. Um, uh, as uh, Eric mentioned, we are rolling out our wallet, but the, our wallet will have multiple services which are very relevant to the community. For example, um, there are many wallets available. You could use any wallet. We are not restricting you from using, but our, our uh, Aforma wallet will have specific features, uh, you know, integrations with specific exchanges. For example, I know that uh, in Africa, uh, mobile money or Africa, Latin America, you know, many places mobile money is a big uh, 
factor, right? So integrating exchanges which would accept mobile money to convert to crypto. Uh, in, uh, so we, we would look at the community, we will get feedback from the community and integrate those services. Even for our merchants, you know, utilities to uh, you know, e easily calculate uh, their uh, revenue uh, um, and returns for any, 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 any sort of uh, accounting purposes. So th those are some of the features which, uh, which we will be launching in the, in the wallet. Uh, obviously, there will be um, a, a minor service fee. But if you are holding some tokens, a former tokens, you would be waived those fee. So, which which again increase, you know, uh, helps you or even you know gives you an incentive to hold the tokens. Uh, there will be staking for curation of certain items, and obviously, uh, as Eric mentioned, there will be some reflection of tokens. One percent of our uh, transaction fee, which goes back to the um, uh, token holder. Uh, uh, just, just quickly on the buybacks because we are just uh, running out of time a little bit. But uh, so, so uh, NFT marketplace is a big uh, part of our vision, um, uh, where uh, artists, as well as artisans, could mint NFTs uh, free of cost, and it could be listed in a marketplace, um, but. Over the future, we want to create a, a metaverse uh, around this, uh, where people could display their NFTs. You know, even even others who are who are you know coming into the metaverse could experience these these uh, wonderful things uh, our culture and our heritage provides, right? Uh, so, uh, and and we will uh, during this NFT marketplace, any sale would obviously have some commissions which is coming back to Afoma. And 50% of that we, we, we plan to buy back and the community will decide whether to burn it or use it, use it for a certain program or not. Um, so the utilization of buybacks is decided by the community. It is community governed, uh, uh, reserves are uh, governed by the community. And, and whenever a reserve, we, we have an allocation of 5% every year after two years for the reserves. But if the community feels that there is no need to release these reserves because we are doing well and our, our things are now, now uh, programs are sufficiently supported with the existing tokens, the community could decide to burn the tokens too. So we will take the burning decisions based on intelligence rather than uh, you know, just, just like a, uh, something which we have to do to do the hype. Um, so unutilized tokens will be burnt and uh, we will do it in a very scientific manner. Uh, the second, uh, the most important part of it is uh, the transparency, uh, which we want to provide. So uh, we will be publicizing some of our wallets, which the community is concerned about, like the reserve wallet. Uh, Eric mentioned about automatic donation to charity. So the, the charity wallet will be exposed to the community. So community can see uh, you know, what tokens are being um, sent to this charity wallet as well as from, from the charity wallet where it is flowing. Uh, we will also uh, try to ensure that whoever we are giving to, especially if there is a charity organization, uh, they will also publicize their wallets where we are sending it so that we, we get a you no know, proper trace, and people could be you know comfortable about about what what we are doing. The buyback wallet uh, would be similarly open to the public, or or the address could be um, where you could do the scan and uh, find out what what transactions are happening. The liquidity rewards wallet. Um, so those are some of the transparency things uh, which we, uh, we we want to include. Uh, obviously, um, you have already seen my face. Uh, you have seen Eric's face, and uh, if you go to our website, you can see all of our faces, all the all the team members. So, we are a fully disclosed team. Uh, we don't hide hide behind anything. So, uh, you can be pretty sure that you know it is a rug pull proof um, project. 
uh, and we stand by uh, the project and it's all driven by our vision. Um, so thank you so much for, uh, you know, I, uh, listening to me, I to, uh, uh, took a lot of things into a short period of time. Uh, in case mm -hmm. you want, uh, you know, more detailed explanation, please reach out and, uh, you know, we can have a specific session uh, dedicated to tokenomics of of Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Baiju. Um, let's see if um, we're waiting for Patrick. I don't know if Patrick is available yet, um, but I wanted to give the audience maybe a few minutes if there are any questions before we proceed. Uh, any questions at all so far? You can at least take one or two questions if need be. Okay, so we have our first question. What is staking for curation? Baiju, do you want to take that? Baiju? Okay, I can answer that question for you. So what we're looking at when we say staking for curation is where if in a situation where we have an artisan who wants to um, 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 put down or, or, or an investor who wants to put down money or put down a former tokens, you can, okay, you, you <laughs> in Lehman Street, yeah, sure. So you can take uh, a former tokens to actually then say, I want, I, I'm holding down our former tokens for a long time. I'm not going to sell that. I'm not going to swap that. You can put that down and say, I want to reinvest it, right? So imagine where you have so much money at the bank and you don't have, you don't want to, you don't have a use for it at the time. You can take that money and then give it to the bank to reinvest for you. So what we can do is we can take your former tokens and then reinvest it in buying maybe Bitcoin, okay? And then that increases our liquidity pool. And as those transactions are happening and revenue is being collected, we are allocating some of that revenue back to you, right? So that's pretty much it. You are why taking some of your Aforma tokens that you have, which you're not, you're holding it down. You don't have no need for it at the time. We can take that, reinvest it, and then use that to invest in maybe another crypto and then we can then um, allocate some of those um, revenues as well coming from that stake to you. Who do we refer to as community? Everyone, yourself. Um, oh, sorry, Baiji wanted me to unmute him. Sorry, let me go ahead and do that. Um, give me a second, technical difficulties. I think you're on mute already, Baiju. No? Let me see here. I think you're on mute already, Baiji. Maybe you have yourself muted. Can you go off mute? Can you go off mute, Baiji? Okay, um, I'll just handle that. So when, when we refer to community, we are referring to everyone, everyone that's part of they are former community, they are, they are former uh, token holders. The community could even be our NGOs that we're partnering with. The community could be uh, for profit organizations that we're partnering with. Anyone that shares our vision, right, of what our former is all about, which is about creating financial inclusion, which is about promoting artisans, wherever they may be, marginalized uh, communities, that is who we refer to as our community itself. 
apart from the community, is, is there any use case behind a former token? Yes. So I think probably you stepped in late. A former today is where we're going to drive a former to for our rewards program on the Celitic website. And I can show you that very shortly. A former will be used for our rewards program to drive um, loyalty to, to, to for our loyal customers, to drive referrals as well, to actually use that to gauge scorecards of our artisans, because we don't want bad players participating on our platform. So obviously, as we say, as we start seeing a lot of um, re, um, 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 feedback that are giving to artisans, we want to keep on encouraging them. So we're going to leverage smart contracts to do all of that token distribution, which Patrick is supposed to be part of. And um, once he probably joins, then we will then have uh, how we will then have him address some of that. And I think he's not yet here, um, but that is what we intend to do. Why can't we use it as a medium of exchange? I mean, that's we we the, the goal is really around where we want to leverage it as a utility token, right? It's not that uh, you, you can't do it. You can absolutely. Okay, Patrick is here. You can use that as a medium of exchange, but the real purpose behind it is to drive uh, utility um, as a utility token. <laughs> this is not an MMM lookalike. Absolutely not. So I'm going to try and see if I can bring in Patrick. Sorry. Um, to share his uh, slide. Uh, give me a second. I am trying to find a way to unmute everyone here. Give me a second, everyone. I am definitely struggling to get everyone off mute here. Hmm. Sorry about that. Patrick, maybe maybe I should make you the host and then you can take over. Hold on, give me a sec. Hi, Eric, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Give me one second here. So I, I think, um, Eric, you, you can hear me very clearly, am I right? Yes, yes, you, yes, we can hear you. Okay, I think there are a lot of, there are a lot of great questions in the chat. From a token perspective, that uh, it would be good for us to have some time to answer those. So I'm going to spend about five minutes talking about the okay. AI component um, of all of these and how everything works together. But my preference would be to be able to um, wrap up quickly that section and come back to some of those great questions about our former token and how everything works. So. I mean, most of us on this call will know will, will have known by now that uh, artificial intelligence is um, pervasive in everything that we do. If you have a cell phone, which most likely you do have, uh, you find that there are a lot of applications that you are using that is being driven by intelligent applications. If you're subscribed to um, Netflix, for example, or if you've gone on Amazon to buy anything, uh, you will realize that you may not realize it, but there are intelligent applications driving uh, a lot of those uh, streams. And so, it, with 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 Celitic and and with with our former, uh, what you find is that we, we will be using AI on our e-commerce platform to drive customer engagement, uh, to drive revenue, but also to drive our rewards program. Um, again, our rewards program is an integral component of uh, e-commerce platform and we want to and we will uh, leverage artificial intelligence to drive those uh, rewards program and so for uh, as an example i mean on, on my left hand side i have examples of ai and e-commerce you know either in personalization website improvement or marketing and sales but if we kind of zero in on the rewards program on the next slide um on the next slide you, you have an example where let's say you go online and you want to buy um, a, a wallet, a leather wallet, or you want to buy some earrings. Uh, besides every of those items, you have the price point for those items. 
but you also have the uh, value of, of 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 how much Afrom uh, Oma tokens you can you can earn by buying those items. And so not only are you buying the item, but you're also getting rewarded for making that decision to buy that item or those items. And so we we intend to, and this will be the first decentralized um, uh, platform, the first e-commerce platform that will be driven by blockchain, not just by smart contract, by, but also by the potential for consumers and vendors to earn rewards uh, by engaging us via that platform. And so what we're looking at designing is a system where uh, we incentivize certain behaviors uh, using OMA token. And so if you have an artisan who registers on the platform, uh, if you have a consumer, like I mentioned, who buys a product, if you have a consumer who shares uh, the product on Facebook, on social media, or refer someone else, what you have is that person earns a reward or my token for those behaviors. And so you're achieving two objectives or multiple objectives. Number one, you're driving uh, the revenue of the e-commerce platform, but you're also increasing the, the value of the OMA token because what it means is that those consumers can use those tokens and come back and buy a product on our platform. And so we see where we have the potential, the opportunity to leverage um, artificial intelligence, not just to enhance the customer experience, but also to enhance the ability of the customer uh, to increase their, their wallet by getting more rewards for certain activities or certain behaviors they demonstrate on our platform. And so not only that, if you look at the next slide, you will see that, you know, let's say a customer is checking out, uh, not only will they see okay i want to buy a shoe or i want to buy this african beaded war mask, war mask and this is how much i have to pay for it uh, they can see how much armor they can they will earn by buying those items but also uh they on their right hand side they can see their apple my wallet uh, see how much they've earned so far in the month and also uh have the opportunity to see how much they can contribute to charity and how much they can donate to other non-for-profit organizations and so not only is the OMA token driving behavior, but it also gives the consumer the opportunity uh, to buy something that will be important to them and to contribute to other non-for-profits that will be leveraging OMA tokens. And so if, if you think about the platform, we're looking at leveraging not just blockchain, but artificial intelligence to drive consumer behavior and to increase and enhance the value of the OMA token. Eric, I'm going to hand things back to you. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, thanks, Patrick, um, um, for for your for you know presenting that or talking about how we intend to leverage AI to drive um, our token distribution. Um, I know Baiju is currently uh, um, uh, you know responding to a few folks in um, the chat group there, um, and I think he's answering some of the questions in there. Um, let's see if um, I don't. I want to see if I can pull Baiju back into this. Baiju, can you hear us? Let me see if I can pull him in again. Okay, here you go. Okay, Baiju, you should be able to talk now. Yeah, can can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, so I, I think uh, there are a lot of questions around, uh, uh, let me go up. I, I think you addressed, uh, apart from the community, is there any use case behind a former token? Uh, yeah. ab absolutely, uh, the, the use cases are, uh, I think we explained it, uh, you know, NFT marketplace, metaverse, uh, even the online marketplace, Celitic, which, which I think we should show the demo also, like a, a couple of minutes. Um, um, so, so there are there are multiple uh, things which Aforma is enabling. Um, when I when we when we say community, uh, what we are trying to do is to uh, is to build a community around these these things as well as uh, to help those community back. 
um uh, so we are we are not just a token where you know we give every one token to every community member uh, there will be a lot of uh, utility around that token uh, one of them i think i think uh, eric you should show uh, what is coming up as a selectic marketplace which is only one of the many things which we are doing absolutely <laughs> so here we go Can everyone see this? Baiji, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. So, so this is our this is a concept page um, of what this analytic or this uh, decentralized marketplace looks like. As you can see, it's saying coming soon, twenty first December, twenty twenty one. So you can't buy anything. So even if you if you went there, you can't place any order. Um, but we just wanted to show our um, investors or, or potential crypto uh, token holders, what Celitic is all about. As you can see, we have artisanal products that can be listed. As you can see, obviously, we put it there, full disclaimer that this is for demo only. As Patrick pointed out, we intend to leverage AI to drive some of these um, rewards programs, right? So which will also give us informed decisions of how to leverage or promote or enable or empower some of these artisans, right? Uh, through AI, we can see who isn't performing very well and find ways to enable them. Um, we want to find, uh, you know, when we keep talking about that community, that community we're talking about is the buyers, the vendors, and our co collaborative partners, right? So through through Celitic program, uh, Celitic platform, we can leverage the OMA token or the Alforma token to generate rewards, right? So this is what the uh, Celitic website looks like, where, again, one of the things that I, I am very excited about is the fact that we can create also a blog page within our platform. That is one of our goals, where we can uh, focus on marginalized artisans who have no voice, who have no voice. We want to be able to give them a platform so that people can see the work that they do. And through that, promote their business, promote their, 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 their sales or their products so that they can be lifted out of poverty. That is one thing that we are definitely excited about and we are making a commitment towards, right? So this is what the Celitic website looks like. It's, again, it's a concept page where you can obviously, uh, let me move this around here. You, this is my account. I'm logged in and I can create my own wish list if I wanted. Uh, Patrick already talked about this where I have it. I, I own my own cart and I'm about to check out and it shows me the equivalence of how many um, tokens I've received automatically as I make that purchase and I generate my rewards, it gets automat automatically updated on my Aforma wallet, which is all going to be incorporated to the Celitic decentralized platform. And from here, we also plan on, again, that word community as we work with NGOs that support these artisans. There are NGOs today that are focused on promoting artisan, uh, 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 the artisanal markets, right? They go, their boots on the ground. Someone once asked me, how, is, how do you intend to reach these communities? Again, it's through that, that ecosystem where we're partnering with NGOs who offer boots on the ground, who work with these artisans. Um, we can even leverage uh, not-for-profit um, 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 organizations who is a sister organization to engage or reach out to um, volunteers from across the globe. We tell the volunteers, go into your communities, go into your, uh, your, 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 your you know, your, your communities where you are, your re regions where you're located, find out, accept, find exceptional um, artisans, bring them in, we onboard them, we put out their product there, right? And that's how we engage these people. That's how we build that community. That's what we are all about. That's the vision that we have within this organization, okay? Let's and, um, I, I don't know, we are running out of time, but there are some interesting questions. There are a lot, so I yes. don't know whether we will be able to cover all of them. Sure. But one of them is that what is the relation between NF, uh, for my NFT and Metaverse? Um, uh, so so the, uh, when, when they say there, it's not an Aforma NFT, what, what Aforma is uh, planning to do is to um, create a platform where artists from these regions can mint their NFTs. For example, it could be a, a musician, it could be a painter, it could be a photographer, it could be a videographer. If they have unique um, uh, digital 
items which they want to uh, create nfts what we are going to do we are building a platform to mint those nfts as well as we are creating a marketplace uh, uh, for 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 them to list their nfts so that you know, people can bid and use it now the metaverse is a separate project altogether which is which is uh, uh, what we currently has named it as afoma land where we are going to create a metaverse where we where people could who is buying these nfts could come and display their products even even we could have a celtic marketplace within that metaverse too where you could go and buy stuff from there uh, you know by uh, you know buy nfts from there and it could be redeemed uh, you know physically uh, later on so the metaverse concept is a much bigger concept um, which is an evolution of the, NF the nft nfts are the building blocks for that um obviously uh, from a metaverse perspective there are a few metaverses which are very siloed ones like the decentraland mm -hmm. um and and others um the concept is very similar uh, you know we create uh, for example within our uh, former land something called a uh, sub saharan experience where people could go there uh, into the metaverse you know see some of these nfts which could be uh, you know paintings which could be uh, a, a live show uh, all of this uh, can be done in the metaverse but uh, to to get there we we need people to create nfts out of their artwork so the first mm -hmm. so we have to first build you now we have to go step by step so nft minting and marketplace is the first step and then then we will create the metaverse where wherein they could you know integrate those stuff Uh, so that you know it becomes uh, you know people could experience that that, that the whole whole experience yeah. right mm -hmm. um because that is that's the way the things are moving the internet is going to transform to a metaverse you know 5 to 10 years from now and we don't want these artisans and artists to be left behind so that's that's the whole idea behind uh, you know creating our own metaverse mm -hmm. Thank you, Baiji. There's just uh, two questions I want to respond. There's a question from Muchena that's asked, um, what is the plan to overcome the challenge of smartphone penetration within the target communities where mostly are, which are mostly artis artisans? And secondly, internet access can be a challenge for artisans in most parts of Africa. How can you ensure they're effectively reached? That's a wonderful question. I think I already answered that question, but I'm going to re uh, repeat my answer. One of the things we keep talking about is we need to build an ecosystem. That is the only way we can lift Africa, right? Some of this technology already exists, but Uchenna is right in the sense of some of these areas still require internet or uh, uh, telephone penetration. So what is our strategy here? We are already talking to the telcos today. We are already speaking with the telcos and we want to find a way where two things can happen here. Either we find a win-win situation where the telcos can offer, for example, smartphone penetration to these, art to these artisans. Why? And what is their win situation for them? They also want to drive data, right? They want to drive data. So they know smartphone penetration in these communities will drive data for them because they know they are losing business to the likes of um, WhatsApp and Telegram and all whatnot. So they want to drive data. So that is how we intend to do that. The second thing is, How do we engage these communities? As I pointed out, we are already talking to NGOs. We're already talking to organizations today that support these artisans where, where, where they are located. That is how we can build that ecosystem where everybody works together to actually lift these organizations or these, sorry, these um, artisans within their community itself. There's one more question that I saw here. What does Celitic mean? Celitic means sell it in commerce. Right, that's what it means. Sell it in commerce. Items listed on Celitic are real products that are created by the same artists and artisans that are creating the NFTs. Baiji, do you want to answer that? No, 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 no. These are two two different things. Yes. Uh, so one one is one is the produce side, uh, where the artisans are making physical products. That is that is where Celitic comes into play. NFT is. Uh, NFT is for digital arts primarily, you know, at least in the beginning. Uh, we are also looking at uh, bringing um, 
some of the rare physical artisan products uh, to nft which is which is uh, happening um, little bit on the fashion world uh, where you uh, they they you know in a high value fashion items they are minting nfts uh, and they have a correlation uh, between the physical and the um, um, and the digital nft um, and we, I, I have been talking to a couple of uh, protocols like the boson protocol which is trying to enable that uh, where where we could come uh, both both the digital and the physical world could meet um, so obviously there uh, for, for an nft it has to be a rare item uh, it cannot be a a commodity where you have 10 items of the same thing right so uh, NFT means it's a non-fungible token, which is a which is a rare rare token. Uh, so some of the physical goods which are rare in nature could be uh, we could create NFTs to it. But from a technology perspective, it is still at a very nascent stage uh, at this point. So our when we start, it would be more for the digital uh, art industry which which means that it could be a physical art like a physical painting which would we could digitize and uh, put it as an nft yeah perfect okay so we, we will be closing this webinar now i want to thank everyone from the bottom of our hearts that we appreciate you taking the time to listen to us this is our first um <laughs> are there opportunities for engineers to get involved there is an opportunity for everyone to get involved so yeah, that, I, I, yeah. As, as Baiju pointed out, yeah. follow us across our social media channels. We are open to everyone. We, are, we, we have a lot of work to, to do, especially on the blockchain space. So we are looking for engineers. We are looking for marketing people. We are looking for any entrepreneurs, pretty much. That is why, you, if you notice, Baiju sometimes uses the word de-commerce. We are trying to decentralize commerce. We do not want it focused on one person alone. We have to bring in everybody together to form yeah. a- yeah, one, one more thing I, I think I forgot to mention is uh, one of the initiatives when, when we talked about Metaverse, one of the initiative around Afoma token is the Afoma uh, Metaverse uh, Open Source uh, Foundation for Metaverse. Uh, this is where you know some of the young engineers who are interested in this technology can come in. We will be supporting that foundation through tokens, uh, but we want to create some open source uh, uh, libraries uh, for for building the metaverse, right? So it's 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 both uh, both both for the creation of the metaverse as well as to educate uh, the upcoming generation on this uh, new technology. So uh, mm -hmm. it has a social side to it as well as a technical side to it. Absolutely. So thank you, everyone. Um, I, I appreciate everyone being on the call. As I said, this is the first of many webinars that we intend to launch. Um, our next webinar um, will probably talk about a different topic of what or where our former comes in. So I thank you, everyone, and please stay safe and uh, and God bless. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye. Thank you.